If you've ever been to a concert with really loud music over the course of a few hours with booming bass coming from these big tower speakers just like this one, you may have had the experience where you walk out of the show talking to your friends about how great it is and you realize that you're shouting. And this is something that most of us have experienced. It's a little annoying at first, but luckily it usually goes away over a few hours, maybe over a day or so. Now it's obvious from our personal experience that the ears are what picks up sound, and we're going to be talking about the ears and how they work. And to denote that that's what we're going to talk about, I'm just going to draw a couple of big pairs of ears here, just to really emphasize that that's the topic of these videos. Now we know that hearing is a sense, one of a number of senses that we have. And in order to understand the auditory system in full, we need to really understand our sensory systems and the basis for how they work. Now we're traditionally taught that we have five senses. In elementary school, or maybe even before that, you learn this. So we're just going to go ahead and make a quick list of those senses here. And the first one is touch. And our sense of touch is really present over our whole bodies, but I'll just go ahead and draw a hand here because one place where we have pr a predominant sense of touch is in the hands. Our second of these five is taste. And taste is primarily a function of the tongue. And this enables us to pick up the different flavors in food and drinks, which is what makes eating such an enjoyable experience. The third of these is smell. And smell picks up small olfactory particles in the air and uses the special sensitive uh, nose cells to pick up uh, these various smells. The fourth one of these senses is vision, and of any of the five we tend to rely, for most of us, primarily on vision. And vision uses the eyes, and this is how we can pick up visual information in the world. So I'll just draw in a pair of eyes here. And the fifth one we've kind of talked about already is hearing. And hearing, like we mentioned, uses the ears to pick up auditory information from the environment. Now in addition to these basic five, we have other senses as well. So let's make a second list here and categorize these under this heading of other. Now the first of these other senses is a sense called proprioception. So we'll add this to our list. Proprioception. And it turns out that proprioception is the ability of the body to know where it is in space. So this is why you can close your eyes and know without looking where your hands and feet are. The second of these senses is called nociception. And nociception is the ability of the body to sense pain. So if you ever go to the doctor's office and they end up drawing blood using one of these, a needle, and while they probably won't take it from your face, at least most doctors anyway, the point is the same. You feel pain because of nociception anywhere on the body that a pain stimulus happens to occur. The third of these is thermoception, and thermoception is the ability of the body to sense temperature. And we can sense temperature in two directions, both hot and cold. The fourth of these is balance, and balance enables us to keep upright and steady in response to both movement and acceleration. And you'll note just by looking at these words that three of them end in ception proprioception, nociception, and thermoception. And this suffixception really just means that some kind of information is coming into the sensory system. So the prefix tells us what kind of information that is. So thermo means heat or temperature, so temperature information is coming into thermoception, and noci means pain, so nociception is your ability to sense pain. And it's important to point out that thermoception and nociception are really just modified versions of touch. So they spread throughout the body just like touch does to give us additional information about the world and the environment. So this whole set of nine, uh, proprioception, nociception, thermoception, and balance, in addition to the basic five, touch, taste, smell, vision, and hearing, form the full complement of our sensory abilities. All nine of these sensory systems have three general concepts that are applicable to any of them, and we're going to go over three of them here. So I'll start a list and I'll just title it Senses and give it three arms for the three different characteristics that we're going to talk about. Just because we have the ability to sense the world around us using all of these nine senses, that doesn't mean that every sensory piece of the environment is going to get into our bodies and get picked up. If the stimulus is at too low of a level, we're not really going to notice that it's there until it grabs our attention, until it reaches the basic level at which we can pick it up. 
And this is the first general concept of sensory systems, and it's this level called threshold. So we'll add that to our list. Threshold. So if a bug happened to be flying around and, let's say, came and landed on this guy's forehead here, it's possible that he might not notice it right away because the bug's not very heavy and it's not going to set off his, his sensory system right there. But if the bug starts to move around, if it starts to walk back and forth, or if it starts to bite him on the forehead, then he's going to become aware of it and slap it off with a wave of his hand. So the level at which it becomes noticeable, that's called the threshold, and it's applicable for any of these senses here. So the second of these general features of sensory systems is an idea called adaptation. So like threshold, we'll add this to our list. Adaptation. So what is adaptation? Well, it turns out that the sensory system is designed so that any repetitive input, any input of getting the same kind of stimulus over and over, won't really get our attention. It's just basically going to kind of be ignored. So a good example of this is going to a party, and you're standing there in a crowded room, and there's lots of noise, but it's all similar noise, all people talking, and it all kind of blends into the background. So that's represented by these purple lines here. As they're coming into your ear, they all kind of blend together, and it's really tough to pick them apart, and eventually they're just kind of ignored. Now, what happens if music starts to play in the background? Something different. Well, that's the yellow line here, and it's easy to see that that stands out against these purple lines, so it becomes noticeable immediately. So these purple lines that were ignored, that's adaptation. Our sensory system adapted to the repetitive input and ignored it. And this new input that came in is immediately recognized by the ear or by the sensory system of whatever sense we happen to be talking about. So far, for all of these nine senses that we've been discussing, we talked about the information that each of them picks up. But how does the information actually get into the body? Well, it turns out that all of these senses and our entire sensory system in general is built on this concept of what are called sensory receptors. And sensory receptors, this is the third general concept of our sensory systems. So we'll add this to our growing list. Receptors. Now these are aptly named because they receive sensory input and then they convert it into a form that our brain can understand and interpret. So they take a sensory input from the environment and they create an output that goes up to the brain. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about this idea of receptors. And it turns out that a good model we can use is a car stereo. So let's say you're driving along, listen to the radio, you got your antenna up. So how does this actually work? Well, radio stations across the country, they have these big giant antennas that you might see. And they continually send out these radio waves in all directions. And they go and spread out, and they're picked up by different radios. Your car antenna is one of them. And it converts this radio signal into a music signal or a talk signal that comes out of the stereo in your car. So we have a radio wave be converted by your car into a signal that your body can understand. But you can't just go outside and expect to hear music playing from all of the radio waves that are continually being sent out. The information might be there waiting to be picked up, but without the right equipment, that information is meaningless. You can't hear it. If you don't have a radio, you can't get the signal and you can't hear the sound. So our sensory system works exactly the same way. And we have lots of sensory information that's present in the environment, though I'll just draw a few of these to illustrate the point. So we have light. So I'll draw a light bulb here. We have sound, so that's denoted by this music symbol. And we may have temperature. So I'll draw this thermometer. And let's say it's filled up to about this line for today. So we have the sensory information that's in the environment, and it's picked up by these receptors, which we've discussed. So we'll add that in here. So these receptors, they take this sensory input and they convert it into an output that goes up to our brain that the brain can understand. So like the radio antenna took the input of the radio waves, our receptors take the input of the sensory information and they convert it into an output that goes up to the brain that we experience as sensation. In the same way that if you don't have a radio antenna, your car can't pick up the radio waves, if you lack a certain type of receptor, you won't be able to pick up the sense that that receptor corresponds to. 
Now each of our senses have a different set of receptors. So the vision receptors are different from the auditory receptors are different from the thermoceptors. So if you're missing just one of them, you'll only miss out on that sense. So we're talking about the ear, so let's use the ear as an example. Now the ear can only pick up sound. It can't pick up light, and it can't pick up temperature. So if you happen to be deaf, the only sensory information that you'll miss out on is hearing information. You won't necessarily miss out on visual or thermoceptor information. That information is out there in the world, but because you lack the receptors to convert it into a form that your brain can understand, it's unavailable to you. The sensory receptors for most of these senses have been given special names, and the ear is no different. And the special cells or the special receptors that pick up this information for the ear, they're called hair cells. And we'll talk in our next video in much more detail about how they work. Now that we've covered the basics of sensory perception, click here to move to our next video to learn more about the structure and function of the ear. Or click here to try a quiz on what we've learned so far.